We're going to have Ahmed Hussein, who, of course, is the spokesman for the Impact Committee, who's going to be speaking to me too, inshallah. I'm confused, right? Uh, Islamic Emirate. I mean, you know, what does that mean, right? Uh, and how does that differ from the Islamic Republic of Pakistan or Iran? I mean, what is this is use of Islamic yeah, in, in the, in the, in the uh, kind of form of govern, gov government? Who are they trying to appease? Because when I look to the announcement and the key leaders, there you go, interim government, you've got the leader, uh, you know, and then you've got the prime minister. Uh, apparently, we've got two deputy prime ministers. I'm looking at the BBC website here. And then you've got the ministries and all the, the heads of the ministries. I can't, which part of that is Islamic Emirate? I mean, I'm, I'm just seeing a, a same kind of political structure as probably you have it in Britain or you have it in, in any other uh, you know, European country. What, what part of it is this an Islamic Emirate? What makes it distinct? Well, firstly, I can't speak for the Taliban. Um, but what I can say is that, um, you know, they are picking up, um, as, as Kalim was saying in the previous program, they are picking up where they left off. So in terms of the structure, um, they are continuing um, from their 1996 to 2001 rule. And um, in terms of who they are putting in, um, it's clearly people who um, had experience from that previous time, experience from the time of the insurgency. I mean, the one thing that you can say is that, um, you know, who are they, you know, who is their target audience when they're talking about an Islamic Emirate? What are they trying to achieve? They're clearly not, um, you know, shying away from the fact that um, th this is clearly going to put people's backs up. You know, if they were trying to appease an audience outside of their borders, outside of Afghanistan, you know, if they were trying to um, play an act on the world stage, the one name they would not pick is an Islamic Emirate. So, um, in terms of what are they trying to achieve, I think it's safe to take their word literally, because if they're not trying to play an act on the world stage, um, you know, there's no need to assume that they're trying to, uh, you know, mealy mouth their way through the words that they're using. So if they want to have an Islamic emirate, um, you know, they, they want something that does as it says on the tin. And um, judging by, you know, the senior leadership that they have and the fact that they have a minister um, of da'wah and of enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. Um, the fact that they have a minister with that role title um, suggests that they want to, um, you know, rule their country in an Islamic manner. Now, the thing about any government, as we've seen in Britain, whether it's Brexit, whether it's coronavirus, is during times of crisis that the existing structures are tested, are reformed and so on. So the way things are right now is not necessarily how they will be, um, you know, a year from now or five right. years from now. Um, but obviously they have had um, a very clear idea going ahead of what they were going to do because within the first week of taking over, um, you know, they had an English, they, they were very, very, you know, they were on it in terms of English speaking um, you know, press releases, even having, you know, press conferences and so on. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of that might be due, due to the deputy leader, um, uh, Abdul Ghani Baradar. I mean, you have to remember, um, in the 70s, he was one of the people, he, he was one of the co-founders of the Taliban. Um, in instead of, um, you know, the USSR has receded, has uh, retreated from Afghanistan, warlords who had been funded by the US are, you know, fighting over who's going to rule the roost yeah. now. He retreated to Kandahar. When I say retreated, I mean, I don't mean militarily. I mean, just yeah. personally, he, he the, the attitude seemed to be that he was fed up with everything. Uh, he, he set up a madrasa. He uh, and then, you know, met up with Mullah Omar and then they formed the yeah. Taliban and so on. This is clearly a man who can plan and can implement right. his plans. No, so, so is, is it a case that we're going to have, a, you know, messaging and, and almost a system for, for, two, for, for two audiences, an internal uh, where you've got the Islamic sentiments and emotions and that's and hence the, the need to have Islamic you know, emirate, right, that we are an Islamic emirate, which gives the idea that we're going to be implementing Islam. But on the other hand, Taliban is, of course, seeking international legitimacy and support. And we know that we've got China and Russia, you know, you know, rushing to to get a, a piece of the or a large part of the pie. And we know we've got America engaging with the Taliban on, on the back and, and Taliban doing everything that they can potentially do to conform to those kind of international scrutiny and standards. So it's going to be a bit of a, a, a difficult act, isn't it, to try to play to two different audiences 
you know, but but I guess they've got some predecessors around the around the around the corner, Pakistan, Iran, and Saudi doing something similar. Yeah, I mean, the last time I was on your show, um, obviously, um, we were talking about Afghanistan as well, and one of the things I pointed out was that Vietnam is probably one of the best analogies to look at. Now, Vietnam, obviously, the the North Vietnamese, the communist Vietnamese, they also um, pushed out um, the US, um, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So I won't, I won't go into a history lesson. But in, but the key thing is what happened next. And obviously, you had, um, you know, the communist Vietnamese, ideologically, militarily, they say so they seem to have won. And yet it was exactly that what comes next in yeah, terms yeah. of the relations with their neighbors, relations with other, whether it's other communist countries or even just the wider world, what happens next? And that is what we would need to see. Right. Um, we need to keep an eye on with Afghanistan. Will, right. other, will other countries, whether they're Muslim countries or non-Muslim countries, yeah. will they engage with them constructively, which allows the Taliban to give their people, the Afghan people, um, some respite after 20 yeah. years of occupation. Yeah. Ahmed, what, yeah. what are your what, what's your kind of analysis and, and your thoughts in terms of as we see the weeks and the months ahead of us? Where do you see it? And how do you see the the Taliban maturing up and politically shaping up? Um, I, I would always go back to my um, analogy of Vietnam because we have to learn from somewhere. So let's look at the country that last beat why, the why US. Not learn, why not learn from Medina? Because the U.S. wasn't around in the time of Medina. Let me let me let me just let me let me just really quickly just make yeah, this no. point. Um, Vietnam became such a pariah state that countries that supported Vietnam were treated as bad as Vietnam. Look, Cambodia. I you know I would ask your listeners look into Cambodia. There was literal you know children starving in the street because Cambodia faced sanctions. Why? Because they supported Vietnam after yeah. they won. Right. So that is going to scare countries from working with. Afghanistan yeah. under okay. the Taliban. Unfortunately, we've, we've run out of time, gentlemen. Oh, sorry. The commercial breaks is going to kick in. Uh, Abu Isra, we, we're going to leave it there. And uh, Ahmed Hussain, thank you very much for joining us and discussing Afghanistan. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum.